and uh, just want to say thank God for the opportunity to uh, fellowship uh, corporately. And so um, with that, I, with further ado with that, we go on to our, our next important thing is that uh, we are on YouTube or on Instagram. If you guys don't know, or haven't known, I'm sure you do. You know, for those that are not able to attend, you know, uh, for whatever reason, uh, needless, no need to worry. We have uh, availability on YouTube and Instagram. Um, also want to uh, give a big shout out to what our um, young uh, women and mature women of God are doing, the grand opening, the official launch of the Women's Advance Ministry. Uh, I want to give kudos to the young ladies and the seniors and everyone who's been doing a great, great job. If you guys have not tuned in or have not joined up or have not uh, became a part of this, any woman that's, you know, in the sound of my voice, you are doing yourself a tremendous, tremendous disservice. Uh, these young ladies, these women of God absolutely put it down and then they do it and they come in their own way. And uh, I've heard one minister say, it's always good to uh, fellowship with people that can relate, you know, to what's going on out there. And these women absolutely cover the spectrum from A to Z. So just thank God for that. Thank you all for that as well. And we're going to dive into today's study. But before we do that, uh, praise and worship opening song by Sister Jackie. The floor is yours, Sister. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Um, I'd like to sing an original song, but before that, I do that, I'd just like to thank God for the ministry that I'm a part of. We had an opportunity to celebrate the man of God last night, um, and we had a wonderful time, and we just thank God for him and for the leadership here. We had an awesome time and um, just celebrating another year in Christ Jesus. And uh, we wanted to be a blessing to him and bless him. The Bible says it's nothing like breaking bread with the body of Christ. We we wish you all in Florida were there with us, but you were there in spirit with us. We saw you all on FaceTime. And I just wanted to say we praise God for the man of God. And we are um, going to continue to keep him lifted up, that he will move with the vision that God has given him for hard drive ministries. Amen. Amen. So, amen. Amen. Without further ado, I'd like to sing uh, you and I. You and I, you and me, we work together corporately. When you speak, I'll respond. Though I'm weak, I'll carry on. You and I, you and me, Lord, we work together corporately. When you speak, I'll respond. Though I'm weak, I'll carry on. I once was blind, but now I see. And I always hear your voice, Lord, calling me. Though other entities, they try to distract. Your love always keeps me right on track. Don't look to the left, nor to the right. In all my battles, Lord, it's you who fights. Cause I'm a child of the day and not of the night. And like no other man, Lord, you do me right. Cause you and I, you and me, we work together corporately. When you speak, I'll respond. Though I'm weak, I'll carry on. Though I'm weak, you make me strong. Though I'm weak, I'll carry on. Amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, we do um, write a lot of our, well, actually all of our material. And so if you guys haven't uh, listened, uh, we do have uh, music that we do put on Instagram. So, you know, when you can, guys, treat yourself to some of that 
beautiful praise and worship while you're doing your morning cleaning or, or whatever, just riding in the car. Uh, thank you for that, sister. We appreciate that. So we're going to dive in today. Uh, I think today's topic is a topic that we've probably talked about in a lot of ways. Um, and I think what we try to do with the corporate studies, especially now that we have the women's advanced studies, a lot of this material, you probably heard it in, in some form or fashion. So we try to just bring it all together when we get to our corporate fellowship. So the question of the day is, do believers have what we call an identity crisis? Um, I think there is one, um, but today my goal is to tell you guys why I believe we should not have an identity crisis. And so um, one of the things that I wanted to get started with um, uh, was just to say that we have always maintained our position that um, Christ is always at the head. And uh, I know at times it may appear, you know, that uh, sometimes we can get off track. Uh, that's never the goal. Um, that's why we've established the ministry the way we did so that there would be a lot of checks and balances here. So while we don't profess to be the best or the experts out there, by no means, uh, we just thank God that we have a, a group of brothers and sisters that that's kind of keep us grounded and, and, and accountable. So I want to get that out the way. Um, Rick, brother Rick, if you can, first Corinthians chapter one, six through 17, um, first Corinthians three, uh, one through eight, if you can, um, start reading it. First Corinthians chapter one, verses six through 17. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye are called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye perfectly join together in the same mind, in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, by my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am, Paul, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized any in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Amen. Uh, and go jump over to 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 1 through 8. We're going to talk about it. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife and divisions are ye not carnal and walk as men for while one saith i am of paul and another i am of apollos are ye not all carnal who then is paul and who is apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the lord gave to every man i have planted apollos watered but god gave the increase so then neither is he that planteth anything neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Amen. You can stop right there. So what's going on here? There's a lot here, a lot again of what we want to make sure we don't miss. And Paul is going to the church um, in Corinth. And of course, there is a lot going on here as far as 
how these believers were actually conducting daily Christian business. And so there was a lot going on here, a lot of division, a lot of splitting, a lot of, uh, you know, Paul goes on to talk specifically about, he calls out Apollos, he calls out Peter, um, trying to constantly remind this body of believers that we are, they, that they are supposed to be operating under one, meaning Christ, Christ Jesus, that he is their Lord. And so, again, I know we've talked about this and, and we kind of make it redundant because what we've recognized is that even though the good intention was there, unfortunately, just by default, because of the way people have a tendency to gravitate uh, to, to people of specific leadership qualities, maybe well-spoken, well-dressed, well-versed, um, people have a tendency to gravitate. And I really like the way Paul just comes over and says, listen, let, let's shut this operation down. Let us make it crystal clear that this is not the way it's supposed to be. And he goes on to make it clear. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in my name? So again, the reiteration, the reminder of how we all got to where we are today. We all got here, not because of anything Paul had done or Apollos or Gaius or Peter, but because of what Christ Jesus had done. And so this is why we have uh, consistently here in our fellowship constantly reminded uh, people that we speak to that is very, very important for you guys not to lose sight of what Christianity is really all about. Uh, and so with that further ado, the Christian perspective promotes several things. Um, and we can go through the scriptures here. Um, in Romans 15, 5 through 6, uh, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Paul making clear in Galatians um, that there is neither Jew nor Gentile nor slave nor free, nor is there male or female for again, all of you are one in Christ Jesus. So again, reiterating what he talked about in Corinthians, the oneness, the identity that the body is supposed to have and operating and functioning, you know, in harmony under one body, right, of believers. Uh, Philippians 127, right? Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come to see you or I'm absent, may I hear of you that you are standing firm. There we go with that one again, that one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. Again, this is why Paul constantly made it clear that as believers, there are certain things when it comes to Christ, we have to be all in alignment with in order for, the, to, for God's church to function the way it's supposed to. Again, Philippians 2, 2, 3, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one mind. Again, doing nothing out of selfish ambition, vain conceit, rather in humility and value of others above yourself. So again, the scriptures supporting Paul's consistency about how the church in Corinthians should have been operating, of course, unfortunately, they weren't. They were getting a little bit off track. And it happens to the best of them. It happens to the best of us. Uh, Brother Ron, I like what you said. You went, you didn't see my hand, so I'm going to go a little further back. It says, did I baptize anyone in my own name that you don't think I did anything in my name? Um, mm -hmm. One of the, one of the, what the Holy Spirit does for us, one of the main thing he does is he came to get us to testify about Christ. Um, even the Holy Spirit doesn't testify, gets us to testify about his own self. His main mi ministry is to get us to testify about Christ and give, you know, it's all about Christ. We always say this, but the key thing is in my own name. Like most ministries are under certain persons who, who wants, and to be honest with you, who wants to make a name for themselves. Uh, 
one one thing they said after um the the flood i think when god confused the languages the main thing that they did that i believe angered the lord is when they said let us make a name for ourselves we live in a world of people who look to make names for the for themselves our job as born again believers is only to declare the name of jesus never to make name for ourselves you know most ministries and mo most of these ministries of or uh, organizations are men who want to make names for themselves our job is always to glorify jesus christ he's the center you know we rotate around him we we are never to look to make a name like i can't set up a ministry to make a name for myself or to look to you know draw people to myself you know what we do is draw people to christ that's all i'm saying being redundant but amen that's all i'm going to say amen. amen powerful point um and that's exactly accurate what you said and that's 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 what we wanted to hopefully bring out and highlight uh in today's study and that's absolutely right now again what was jesus's position on all of this we know paul obviously is a representative of Christ. Um, but again, in Jesus' own words, we see very similar tonality, right? Um, in John 17, 20 through 23, he says, I'm going to pray for also for those who will believe in me that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. And may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I, I really like this one because See, everything God does is with a purpose. And one of the things that, uh, and I think uh, Bishop and I were talking about this the other day, and I said, it doesn't matter where I go. I, I should be able to go to any fellowship across this country of professing believers, of course, close my eyes and sit in that pulpit, sit in that pew and hear the consistent message of Jesus Christ, no matter where I go, right? I should be able to do that. And I like what Jesus is saying here in the sense that when you can't do that, what happens is, is that it really dilutes a lot of what the Christian agenda is really all about. Because a lot of times you have all these worldly people out there looking at everything we do, every step we take. And what they really want to do is bring shame to the gospel because now they can say, oh, look at what these guys are doing over here. Look at what they're saying over there. Look at what they're preaching over there. And so it's so important for us to be consistent when it comes to the things of Christ. And it really, really matters uh, more so than just a bunch of word salad, wordplay. Um, another thing we've talked about many, many times in this ministry is a Matthew 23, 8, 12. Again, Jesus warning and making it crystal clear to his disciples, all right? How are my people supposed to operate? And he goes on to say, but you are not to be called rabbi for you have one teacher. And here we go again. And we say this all the time in this ministry. You are all brothers for the greatest among you will be your servant for those who exalted themselves will be humble and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Why the stress, stressing the importance of us to operate in the brotherhood? Because again, this is what Paul was saying when he confronted uh, Peter in Galatians, uh, knowing that these people have the tendency to pull people away from God's plan and God's will because of their individuality and what they see and what they say. And again, this is not what it's supposed to be like. We're not supposed to walk around with these positions, with these titles, with things like that. Now, I'm not gonna continue to beat that down without touching on some key things here because we did, and, and Bishop kind of alluded to this, right? So what we have seen in the modern era, let's be realistic. Um, we have to give, so what we have to honestly be aware of is that this modern era that we live in, similar to what Paul was talking about back in uh, Corinth, yeah. uh, about these identity, this identity Christianity. And uh, let's be realistic. The men on this screen, have they done some tremendous things in the communities that they serve? Absolutely. I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the impact that the Reverend Calvin Butts had or David Wilkerson, A.R. Bernard, these men, John Jenkins, these men have had tremendous, tremendous impacts in their communities. 
And while we understand uh, how important it is for us to fellowship and, and, and serve the right way, it goes back to something the bishop was saying earlier, that sometimes these identity, identities supersede what's going on in the Christian community. Sometimes the identities of these people and the identities of these organizations supersede what we are supposed to be doing as believers. And the danger of this, and while as great as some of these men are, we can never get to the point where what these people are saying supersedes what we're reading in sacred scripture, supersedes what we're praying about and what we've studied over the course of, of our years in ministry. We cannot let anyone, no matter how whatever the world says about them, get us to blind our views on the things of Christ. Because once we do that, now we're treading into what we call very, very, very dangerous territory. And again, we, we would be remiss to say that these men came up here just by the sake of, of, of a miracle. They were here for a specific reason. And how they got here has a lot to do with what took place in the black community way, 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 way back. So we have to understand that nothing happens overnight. The act of slavery, as horrific as it has been, we have talked about it over and over. However, from our bird's eye view, most of us, I believe we do, can honestly agree that through the horrific uh, trials of slavery, a lot of us are here today serving Christ. Right, A lot of us are here serving Christ because of the very negative impact of slavery. And what that means is that a lot of us that were pulled out of the motherland, uh, some of us, as Sister Jackie said a couple of weeks ago in her Bible study, were worshiping the ancestors. Some of us were influenced by the nation of Islam. If you remember the scene from Roots where Kunta Kinte is holding Kizzy up to the moon god. Uh, some of them were just worshiping all types of things. I don't even, I can't even put it into words. But the point is a lot of us came out of a lot of stuff uh, in the African um, uh, uh, continent. And so again, what was meant for evil, again, God meant for good. And so a lot of us are saved by the way of that. But I'm gonna go into some other things. There was a lot going on in the churches. The church at that time, the ancient, I call it the original uh, African-American church, or organization, there was a lot. They, they did everything. You, you raised your children there. Uh, slaves communicated with one another. They mobilized to with Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. There was a lot of things going on there. Uh, a lot of community building. Uh, some slaves didn't know how to read. A lot of them, I think, uh, uh, learned how to read by reading pages of scriptures. Um, uh, I know that um, uh, some slaves befriended Christian uh, slave masters and the children would teach them how to read. Um, a lot of educational and economic advancements. I mean, a lot of uh, some of you guys that have come out of the HBCUs, a lot of those colleges were tremendously impacted uh, by the uh, African-American churches from the 18 and early 1900s. So we have to acknowledge that. Um, again, uh, pr the preservation of a whole, you know, if you really want to see the storyline of African American pain, suffering, growth and development, you had to go through uh, the history of the black church. So we cannot sit here and say that the men on the previous slide didn't just get there. They got there because of what took place in our history. Uh, Not but make no mistake, does that mean that this is what Jesus had planned, that we were supposed to get to a point where we got so caught up in the social sociology of our day that we forgot the whole purpose of what Christianity was all about? I don't believe so. If you look back, even during Jesus's day, during the Roman oppression, there was a lot of social unrest in Jesus's day. Tons of it. Tons of it. And so Jesus, matter of fact, and, and if I'm correct, um, uh, Bishop, you had some uh, study. I think you thought Judas was involved maybe in some of the social, uh, 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 political uh, movement of his day kind of on the side. I think we talked a little bit about that and how we think that uh, Judas, I'm sorry, not Joseph, Judas was 
kind of working covertly with the with the other side, trying to convince Jesus to uh, do things outside the will of the Father and obviously come in and destroy the Roman oppression. So we've seen a lot of that, a lot of that, even in, in, in Christ's day. But why did Christ not do that? Is, it, is he saying that we should not have uh, social influence? No, Did he, is that we should not fight for the rights uh, um, community and, and, and things that are not right in the eyes of, of people and that we shouldn't serve people? I think he's not saying that. I think what we're saying is that if it's done at the expense of Christianity, now we have to correct that and say, maybe something is a little wrong. Um, Bishop, I'm sorry, do you have something to say then? My, my point on it is that um, um, we are not uh, social activists. Um, the body of Christ is not here just to address human problems. We are, God has called us to address the sin problem. And the sin problem is what puts everybody in situations. It puts blacks against whites, whites against black. Um, even in, uh, we said this before, in Africa, some years back, you had the Africans with the pointy noses killing the Africans with the flat noses. Mm -hmm. And racism, it doesn't just come in color, right? Uh, the Bible says that the heart of man, no matter what color he is, is desperately wicked. And this is this is what needs to be addressed. Um, now, as far as, like you said, during, slavery produced a lot of social community building because of what was done to the slaves and everything. And I agree with that. But, you know, um, sound doctrine was not really being taught. Uh, a lot of people um, use scripture to manipulate it use scripture to colonize and use scripture to advance themselves. And we see all of this uh, in our human history. But the job of the true church and the true believers is to give people the right doctrine, the right teaching, to teach people how to approach God the right way. And I think that's what's missing even in our generation. And I need, I th I, we need to get back to that and get away from, or like you said, something in the scripture you read, they said, there's no male or female in Christ Jesus. We're all one. Like there's not even, there's no colors. There's no, you know, God sees us as one entity. And we, we have to get back to that. No matter mm -hmm. what color, no matter what creed, we have to get back to that. And I think we missed that, you know, because of the color of our, color of our skin and, you know, the worlds that we live in and how we, think and how we're taught to think, we miss it tremendously. That's all I wanted to say. New day. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful point. And I think that's what we were concerned about. The expense of the gospel, the expense of our Christianity, these things should not uh, challenge that. And uh, I think that's where we get uh, the train way, way, way off the tracks. Um, Brother Mike, what you got on that? Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Well, I'm going to go back a little bit. You, you said a scripture earlier, and I wanted to backtrack because um, you said a lot of good stuff. Um, you used the scripture that we should have one voice, right? That we should all speak the same. And the problem today is that in mainstream Christendom, there's too many voices. Mm. The gospel in one place, it sounds like this. You go somewhere else, it sounds like that. You go somewhere else, it sounds like that. And what happens is we have to get back to that one voice. So the early church understood that. They understood that clearly about that one. The doctrine was all the same. You spoke to, it's like I spoke to praise and I spoke to Kim. I think they was the same person. You understand? So mm. the gospel was preached in such a clear cut way that people was getting saved. People, you know, people was turning to turn into God, you know. People was being set free, you know. The Bible says in Timothy, in the last day, there should be a great falling away from truth. I believe we're in the midst of that right now. Amen. Because we have so many different gospels and so many different voices and so many different things. People can't hear the gospel clearly. They talk to, they'll talk to Deacon Brown, hear it one way, and talk to somebody else and hear something totally different, you know. So we got to be very careful. One thing I, I love about the ministry I'm a part of if you talk to any one of us, it sounds like you talk to the same person. Not because we are brainwashed, because we understand that cults are very different. Because mm -hmm. people mistake cults for sound doctrine. 
the difference between sound doctrine and cults is that cults produce the same person. Like, like you ever see cans that's produced on a on a on a on a mill roll? Like they all look the same, dress the same, act the same. You see the Mormons, they have the same clothes on. You won't meet two Christians that's alike. We're very different. Our personalities are uniquely different. But when you hear the gospel, it all sounds the same. You hear Sister Jackie, it should sound the same. You see, you hear it from Sister April, it should be like, okay, right? So the mm. problem is today is that the gospel sounds different. If you, whoever you're talking to, you hear a different gospel. And that's the problem we have today, is that the gospel does not sound the same from Christians the way it should, the way the early church had it. And that's why we're having a struggle now. Ministries like ourselves, we're going up there to play clean up. We clean up behind people's mess to let mm. them know that Jesus Christ is, is, you know, free. You know, there's no price tag on them, and we want to give them to you, you know, uncut and raw. That's what we do here. That's all I wanted to say, brother. Amen, brother. Excellent point. And, and that's exactly what it comes down to. And sometimes you're right. <laughs> it just seems like uh, we're the bad guys, but it's really not about bad guy, good guys. It's, it's just like you said, it's the cleanup and making sure that we don't bring no shame uh, to the gospel. The same gospel message that Paul had thousands of years ago is the same message that we believe today. We don't really sway from it. Um, and again, from us having a bird's eye view, looking back at this, this identity crisis, and again, like I shared with the brothers on the previous screen, should not exist. Um, but um, as you can see here, I have this, uh, this slide here, the National Association of Evangelicals. And the reason why I put that there is because whether a lot of you guys know it or not, a lot of those voices uh, and those doctrines that some are off to the left or off to the right, that's not by accident. It's not by accident. A lot of it is by design. You see, the National Association of Evangelicals is one of a few associations where all of these ministries all over the country, uh, Chicago, New York, Philly, everywhere, are operating under this governing organization of, of ministers that are put in place to kind of oversee what's going on out there in these congregations around the country. So, you know, I, I remember when uh, I think Sister Kim had asked me uh, how I felt about a particular ministry. And I told her, I said, you know, I, I could pull the minister off and speak to him and privately and, you know, talk to him and maybe bring to light. But I told her, I said, I find it very hard to, to believe that these ministers don't know what they're preaching and teaching. I said, they absolutely know what they're doing, how they're doing it, and the way they're doing it. And it comes from a lot of these types of organizations that are out there that oversee everything that's going on in, in, in Christendom, as they say, around the country. Uh, one of the uh, guys, I think you remember, um, Ted Haggard, he was one of the guys that ended up stepping down through some kind of scandal that he was in so again these are men just like you and i mere men like you and i right i, I thought this was ironic too um and, and again uh, i'll read this too today people have a tendency to take on the identity of their fellowship right unfortunately if the leadership is not operating under the core tenets of the faith this can lead to tremendous amount of discord within the christian community as a whole. Kim and I was looking at a disturbing stat the other day, and we saw that in 1990, uh, people who profess Christianity, I think was at 70, no, excuse me, 91% of the people in the United States. And again, it's professing. So we know that in professing, are they accurately Christians? That's a whole nother story for another day. Uh, but today it's at 67%, meaning people who identify with Christianity today is down to 67%. And um, that's frightening. It's frightening for a lot of reasons because if they profess it at 67%, if you're looking at people that are truly practicing Christianity to the core, that number is most likely a whole lot lower than 67%. Uh, and again, uh, not just to say this just because, but we saw in the scripture where Jesus said that the way we are to operate today, excuse me, uh, as believers is not so. In other words, the titles and the organizations that the world had, the church was supposed to operate very uniquely different. And, you know, when I look at organizations like the National Association of Evangelicals, 
they're no different than what the cardinals and the bishops do over there in Rome underneath the Pope. It's almost the same exact system of control uh, and uh, uh, power and structure and all that and being able to have their hands in every single thing that's going on in the pulpits across the United States. So again, this is the identity crisis that we believe where it comes from. Uh, I don't think this is an accident. A lot of this stuff comes from the top down, but the top is not Christ, <laughs> it's something else. And this is why we, a lot of us struggle to get out of these fellowships because for some uncanny reason, we thought we were doing something wrong by not being a part of it. Um, and then we had to recognize, wait a minute, this is not what God called true Christianity. So again, does that mean that we cannot have diversity? Mm. Well, Brother Mike said it best. We all speak with one voice, but I don't talk like praise. Praise don't talk like me, right? I don't look like Brother, uh, I resemble Brother Calvin in certain features, but he's his own man. I'm my own man. And a lot of us are our own. Sister April's her own, Sister Kim, Sister Brother Jalen, Brother Spencer, Brother Rick. And the point is, is that uh, God wants us to have diversity. I like something that, uh, uh, Bishop said uh, earlier, he said, you know, God creates us uniquely to reach the audience of people that he puts us with. So are we supposed to identify? Yes, we are. We are supposed to identify with certain people. Um, but should that identity come at the expense of alienating other believers? Absolutely not. I should be able to go in any fellowship, white, black, brown, blue, or whatever, and if they profess Christianity, I should get the same spiritual growth, the same vibe, the same energy as I would if I sat in any other pulpit, any other congregation, excuse me. I should have the same feeling when I walk out of those, those doors, okay? And so, yes, different diversity, yes. Uh, uh, but again, as God wants us to understand, when it comes to his son, he made it crystal clear. There is no diversity in the way we get to God. Jesus said it clearly, I am the way, the truth, the light. No one, and I'm adding here, absolutely no one gets to the father, but through me. And so when it comes to those things, we have to be on one accord. And again, I don't think that's what we see in the modern era today. Now, should we have different views of opinions? Yeah. You know, I go at it all the time with, with Kim over certain things, and I don't like the color of this, or you know, we can talk about uh, certain uh, ways people operate in, 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 uh, in fellowship. Uh, I may want to uh, like this song. You may like that song, or I may want to uh, put on this color or that color. Those petty little things have nothing to do with anything. But when it comes to the consistency of the gospel, no, there should be no different views. Um, Sister Praise, I'm sorry. I love what you're saying, Cousin Ron. I just wanted to piggyback off of what you said before. I believe that since the beginning, humans have found comfort in groups and being in certain groups and like just dividing themselves amongst one another. As you guys know, I'm in New Hampshire. I'm probably one of five black students in the school. Mm -hmm. So it already feels like a group itself. I remember I was talking to one of my friends and she was like, cause she grew up in um, going to fellowship with her family, sung in the choir. She grew up with that. And since she's been up here, she's been attending her fellowship online. She was like, I wanna go, this is how she said, I wanna go to church. And I was like, well, you know, there's a couple of fellowships around here. I'm pretty sure you can find one. She was like, mm -mm, I want to go to a black church. I said, well, first of all, look at where we are. You know, I don't, if that's where you're going for, I don't, you're going to have to drive farther down. But she was very set on attending a black church. And I feel fellowship. like fellowship. And I feel like since being in law school, it made me realize like, okay, if I can fellowship with people going to these different places and I get the same word, why should it matter of fellowshipping mm -hmm. with people who just look like me? Now, I had that realization, but hearing her, having that conversation with her before I came home, it just back to what you were saying, it's like humans really find comfort 
and being in groups and being with this people who are like them, people who are the same for that feeling. But that's what your point made, reminded me of. Thank you very much, powerful. Amen, powerful points to spread. And that's true, we do. But you know, it's powerful that you say that, but I should feel that warm, fuzzy feeling when I'm around other believers that's expressing solid Christianity, right? I should be able to look past the color, past the skin color. Um, but again, I love what you said because that's that that's so true. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. You had your hand up. Um, just, yeah, that's what's hitting home to me, right? What Grace talked about. I have several friends and, you know, we're in a very uh, interesting end of year process, right? This This presidential vote. And I think it has surprised me how many of my friends um, have differing views. And I look at my life, I kind of stage it or in phases, right? First and foremost, I'm a Christian, right? Then mm -hmm. I'm American, then I'm black, then, you know, I'm a woman, blah, 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 you know, whatever. All of that is, is, is under the fact that I'm a Christian first. And as I'm talking to the people around me, they don't think like that. A lot of my friends are, I'm black first, right? It's about race more so than your belief. And I think that's, that definitely skews our perspective. We're not looking at life in general, but especially this, this election or the candidatorial process and voting that we're doing right now through those eyes of a Christian, we're looking at them through the eyes of race. And I think that, of course, I disagree with that, but I, I feel like it's very visible, this differing of kind of how we we interpret or, or live out God's word, right? And I think that that's, it's sad in a lot of ways, but I just, yeah, that that's what hit home to me today, listening to you. Amen. And and again, um, and that, that that's a whole story for another time, but that, that's a powerful point that you bring out. I like the way you layered it down, Christianity first, and then your your country, your culture, and all those things. And you know, and we we think that that's automatic with everybody, but it really isn't, you know. But I think today's conversation, and we have a few more minutes before I close out, is really to bring light that as Christians, should we have these different views? And one of the views that I want to talk about that we shouldn't have any different views on is the view of marriage. You know, um, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and the two become one flesh. Uh, I put this here for obvious reasons that, you know, it's a good point you brought up, Sister Kim, about uh, the political and all that. But Politics aside, you know, the, these are things that are in the Bible, you know, that we all that we believe, we, we believe this our whole lives, right? And again, as I've shown you the slides on previous slides of all those great men that were on in the, that highlighted in this particular um, Bible study, and there's a lot more, but I didn't want to mess with the low hanging fruit like Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes. There's so many more of them out there, uh, but there should never be a uh, 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 a challenge, excuse me, a, a dispute on certain things when it comes to things that God has made crystal clear. Um, Ephesians 1, 4 says that he, for he chose him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. This passage shows that God had a purpose for people even before the foundation of the world. You know, too many of us are seeing things in today's society amongst so-called believers that are questioning some of the things that you see on the screen right now. And again, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they should surely be put to death and their blood is upon them. So I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, I got your hand up there, Sister Praise. Um, but I wanted to just say that there are certain things that there should never be a difference of opinions or views. And these are things that unanimously as believers in which we've known our whole lives that God has made certain things absolutely crystal clear along with the fact that I am the way the truth and the light that no one comes to the father but by me 
These things here are also very, very, very clear fundamental uh, cores of the Christian views and values. Um, I'm sorry, Sister Praise. Go ahead. Yeah, Jan. Oh, no, that was me, uh, Ron. Mm. I want to go back a little bit. Sorry, I, mean, I like what you're talking about, but one thing I remember when I was in prison, right? It was very hard to fellowship because you had brothers from all walks of life, from every type of denomination. Some were raised Pentecostal, some was raised Baptist, some was, you know, raised in different um, organizations. And they came into prison with that mindset. So people flocked to the people they can identify with, or how they were raised and how they were taught the Bible. And me, I wasn't raised in none of that. So, I, you know, what God poured in, the way he poured into me was a little different. So I didn't, I was easier for me to adapt to certain, to doctrine, to teaching, because I didn't have, I wasn't pre indoctrinated, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, my best friend in there was a Caucasian brother by the name of Frank. Me and him had, his life was totally different from mine. He loved hockey. He said when he, he liked rock music. He was a totally, like he was raised, you know, with his mother, his father, up, you know, he's from upstate New York. You know, they, they had a home, you know, he, he went to school and he had a car accident. He was drunk and he killed somebody. He was in jail for that, but he wasn't like a criminal. He didn't sell drugs. He didn't have none of that. We had no identification in our lives, but when it came to Christ, we were knitted. We were one. We believed the same way. And because of that, we were best friends. You know, he used to get a lot of, you know, food from home. He shared everything with me. We were really, really close, right? We shared and we fellowshiped and, you know, the love we had, even when we came home, we, we, we made it our business to see each other and talk on the phone. And my point is, is that we had nothing in common for us socially, but in Christ, we had everything in common. And that's really the way it's supposed to be when it comes to anybody and everybody, right? Something else you're saying, even in marriage, the way God created man and women, right? One thing I always say to simplify it, everything God created, he created to bear fruit. Mm. Everything he created, he created it to, to continue without him. You know, God didn't create something and then he kept creating it. Whatever mm -hmm. he created, he created to procreate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when there's procreation, you know that it's, it's, it's of God because God allowed everything he made, the animals, the humans, the trees, and everything procreates itself. A man and man can't procreate. A woman on woman can't procreate. They have to go, you know, they could go get officially inseminated. They, you know, some, you know, I had a niece of mine, I'm not going to say her name. She wanted to, you know, go, she, you know, she's, she's a lesbian, but she wanted to go get with a man just to have a baby, you know, not mm -hmm. for relationship, not for marriage, but she needs, she said, I need a man, you know, I want to, I want to have a baby, but she didn't want to, you know, be a wife. She didn't want to go back to being a hundred percent woman. So mm -hmm. she felt like, well, let me. You know, but see, one thing people can't fail to realize, they can't get away from their created purpose. See, God created us to procreate. So even if it's two men or two women, after a while, they're going to want children. They want to want a family. They're going to want to get married because that's the way God created us. Mm. But when God's involved and you do it his way, it, it comes automatically. Procreation just happens. But when procreation stops, it's not of God. Mm. Anytime somebody comes together and there's no procreation and there's a problem, then it's not of God. Either God is not endorsing it. It can be a man and woman. God will not, because children come from God. Whatever reason, they won't have children. I worked for a fertility doctor. And a lot of people couldn't have kids on their own. I get that. God blocked it for certain reasons. But when mm. anytime when there's no procreation on its own, without no one's outside source help, then there's a problem. A major problem and that satan's job is to always come and pervert and stop what god intended to do on his own that's all i wanted to say very well said bishop um and i think that's what we wanted to get out of today as uh, bible study and i hope everybody did that no matter what um what you see what you hear um who you've been with who you fellowship with or, you know again a lot of us today we don't sit under these uh, ministers like we used to. God has pulled us out of a lot of that and we thank God for it. Um, 
But the one thing we never want to use as an excuse, we don't want to use our color, our social um, connections, our education, uh, uh, our political party, whatever you name it. Nothing should ever come in the way of the truth of God's word. Nothing should ever run interference with the things that God has ordained for us in our lives, whether that's bad relationships, friendships, you name it. Nothing, 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 nothing should ever misconstrue, get you thrown off, misunderstood about any of the things that God is doing in our lives and God's purposes and plans. And that is for the previous slide. Make no mistake. There are people out there that claim to be in the Christian community that question marriage, that question uh, abortion, that question homosexuality. And what I'm saying in today's Bible study is that when it comes to certain things, there should be absolutely zero questions about what God said. And that's all I have for today. Uh, floor is open. Amen. Mm -hmm.